The progressive wage model has proven and will continue to benefit our lower wage workers and assure them of wages and work prospects on a sustainable basis. And this is especially crucial in the era of rising cost of living. The success of PWM so far lies in our not so secret ingredient of tripartism, where unions, employers, and government come together to reach win 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 outcomes for all parties. This is why PWM is a sustainable model to uplift wages, welfare, and work prospects for our workers. While the implementation of LQS is necessary to protect local workers and prevent displacement of low-wage jobs by foreign workers, it will also potentially be problematic for lower-wage workers because the current amount of $1,400 is much lower than the P20 wage levels of about $2,800 in 2022. Therefore, I would like to call on government to annually review the LQS to ensure that the wages keep pace with the wage convergence targets for our lower wage workers. Workfare income supplement enhancement took effect from January 2023, including a rise in qualifying monthly income cap from $2,300 to $2,500. There is room to better address the needs of our middle income workers. I would like to take opportunity to call on government to expand the eligibility criteria and increase payouts for those with dependents to cover more middle-income workers.